Hi guys, in this video I'm just going to talk about and show you how to get some decent concept art for yourself using a couple of things. So first thing is going to be Luma AI and the second one is going to be Leonardo. Uh, we're also going to use Blender uh, just to help in between with something. So I'm going to put in a prompt or why not just jump to something I've done before. Um, so you can put in a prompt and it will give you four options. You can click on that and you can upscale. Now, I've already done this uh, with a few things and been testing this workflow and it's pretty cool. Um, so I've come up with some nice prompts, uh, nice results here like this chest. Uh, and what I can do is I can download this and then pose it how I want. And I'm going to do that right now. So let's just download this chest here and extract. I'm going to jump into Blender and import, and it's an FBX. Okay, load that in and then click the material one. If you don't see the texture, uh, you will do it. If you've got. So now that you've got that, you want to uh, render this in a way that you know, gives you a nice view of all the details and stuff. So I'm just going to look at the material here just to see if I can put a little bit of emission on it. So I'm going to use the same uh, texture there and I'm just going to open up the, the shader by going into shading and let's just see Look at this RGB color. I'm going to move this down into emission as well just for it to be self lit and that's it. Uh, so once that's connected up, so it's the same one, just the one that goes into base color. Just copy that, drag that down into emission. It's just the easiest way of getting that. Now back to the material layout, and you'll see this is all nice and bright now. Okay, uh, I recommend uh, kind of call this orthographic view, and then I'm just going to choose this and duplicate the model by using control D in my case uh, I'm using different um, what you call it interface okay so I'm going to do some different angles on this so let's just do 45 there and let's duplicate that again and do 90 there really know how to use Blender so I might be missing a few tricks. Let's just fix that and then duplicate it to 180. And if we want that other side like that, I'll be 270 there. So I've done that and now I want to just gonna close that. Um I don't know how to close this. Help. Anyway, uh, let's move this over a bit and I want to turn the, the grid off, so I think that's the view. Uh where's the grid? Again, sorry, I'm not a, a user of Blender. There we go. Right, so we got this image, and so far it's okay. That was just one I did earlier, and you'll see how that worked out. Let's call this chest views. So now with that, I'm going to go into uh, Leonardo, and I've already signed up to this with my my Google Mail and it's a free account I've got here so I've got image generation you can see the, the six heads that you saw there this was the results I got from that at different strengths and although these don't 
line up with each other in any way. They do bring a bit of inspiration and maybe a little bit of reference that could be useful. And the, the more you change that strength, um, the more different each view is going to be. They're never going to be um, exactly what you want. Uh, this one was uh, sitting much closer to the model. So I'm going to go to image guidance, switch that on and upload the chest reference, uh, chest views. Now it's a good idea to just check the size of that. So it's detail says uh, 2530. 1543, so half of those is about 1200 by 750. So I'll say 1200 by, in fact, I think it's already chosen the right size. So I'll just bring that down a bit like that. Doesn't really matter. Right, I'm going to bring this up to 60%, a good, a good amount, uh, and I'll just call this fancy chest six angles and generate doesn't take long so I'm just going to jump back to there we go so we've got these cleaner it's cleaner representation of this chest which could be you know very well used as a sprite or something so I'm going to go back to uh, Luma here, and you can see how it's upscaled this one, and yeah, so you see how that looked before. So it didn't take long to upscale something. I've been experimenting with a few things, like it's kind of a little skull here. Um, so all you do is make high res, and it's going to make a high res model of it. Go back to. Uh, here now there's a couple options I can do I can either uh, go back to the image guidance and change the slider here to like maybe I'll do 45 which means uh, the AI generator is going to do more of the, the work to change this and my my prompt here has got less weight to it All right. or once it's finished uh, I can actually click this button and it will send this over as the reference. Um, yep, so let's do that. So using this as the new base and now it's dropped to like 30%, that's the default. And let's just leave everything, I'll go for generate, see what it comes up with. So we get these nice little variations. You can see how it's starting to try to be a bit more realistic looking and a bit noisy. Uh, none of this makes much sense anymore. So I think stick with that and bring the strength up to 60 again. And then I'll just click generate. It will be just a bit closer. So it's going to look like this and maybe polished up. And there you go. Um, apart from some weird bits that don't make sense, like this here and this here, I mean, that kind of relates to this, I suppose. Um, it doesn't know these things. It doesn't know what this is supposed to look like in 3D, but it's up to you to, to fix these things. And you can see how it all looks. Um, if you were clever, you could take the original model um, and project all of this over the top of that. Now, how you would do that, so keep, I guess keep everything in place here. Um, I'm assuming these are all using the same texture, so um, I don't know if this will work, but we'll see. Uh, so what you would do is go to uh, your painting mode, let's see, texture paint, and in theory, if I paint on one of these, it's going to show up on the other. Yeah. So this is this is where it kind of gets interesting. So I can go here and download that image. 
and uh, so in texture painting I think you go here and you're going to add uh, a new texture um, I have no idea how to do this I think you go here and import it first new image uh, open and downloads I think that's it then you would choose that there and change this to stencil and it should appear now you can use the right mouse button to move this around shift to scale it now, because it's not uh, in a perfect square you need to kind of work out the the, the aspect ratio of this uh, or just scale the the X differently like that or actually I'll do it on the Y let's add a bit 1.5 um, oh and also if you can't see it so well just bring this up right it's not far off The aspect ratio is still a little bit out, so let's just change this to. I don't know if I need to go up or down, let's try 1.6. Yeah, that's almost close. And let's try that again 1.7. Scale it up. Right. Uh, still a bit out. The easiest thing to do is actually just make the texture a square. That would help this a lot. Um, I was going to mess with this again. Let's do 1.6. Pretty sure I can get this to match with a bit of patience. Right. Let's just say that's good enough. Right. And then I can just start painting this. Let's turn this um, texture opacity down a bit. And I think we're on this mesh, so let's paint that one. Uh, I can make the brush size bigger. Let's do that. And right, and click on that mesh. Do this bit. Oh, texture. Yeah, it should work. Texture paint. I don't know why it's not working. Let's do this one. Okay. Uh, move the texture a bit. Why is this not working? Texture mask, stroke, blah, 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 blah. I think you might have to come out of it and go back in. Strange. So it's not letting us do the other ones. Shame. So that would have been super easy to get that to work, but it doesn't seem to be. Oh, we can click image aspect, maybe uh, for keeping the right size. But I'll say textural, textural, soften textural. Go back to this one. I'm just curious to see. Yeah, it's actually still drawing that. Don't know if that's just a, a limitation of. Why is that there? Change the object in the current mode. Ah, there we go. Okay, I forgot it out. You see, as I update that, it's actually so. It's actually updating the other ones. I'll click there and which is I believe that one and then this one okay 
here. It's going to avoid the edges a little bit. I don't want to overwrite anything. This is quite hacky, but it seems to work. And then this one, make sure you click that little side. Yeah. Alright, we figured that out. <coughs> so there's a little bit of work to be done with it. Let's just come out of this texture mode and back to the object. I'm just going to remove all of these just for the sake of it. You can already see that we have something that's a bit of a nicer texture. Now I could have went further and done a top view and stuff like that, but this is now good enough to use. Um, like if I wanted to make a sprite or something or an icon, I can take a picture of this and work with it. So I'll do just that. So I'll just um, turn the grid off again, wherever it is. Uh, floor then, okay, and uh, axis as well. Let's turn those uh, those off. Oh, and also the cursor. Don't like this cursor. Right, and I want to turn off the little dot as well. Extras, bones, origins. There we go. Right, so this gives us an image we can kind of work with at different angles. And I could go in and even paint more, right? Color pack and fix all this up. Uh, do some retopology and fix it more, right? But if I just want a like an icon, I can then, I'll just snip that there, and let's call this a chest icon. Now another free tool you can use is Photo P, Photo P which is like Photoshop but online, and okay it's not as advanced but it does the job, and then I'm going to open that Open that up. Let's see where does it put it? Chest icon. Okay, and I guess the first thing you want to do is just magic wand the background color. Let's turn on. Yeah, let's turn down the tolerance a bit. Yeah. Okay. You see, it's caught a little bit here. Right. And it's going to do delete, and that's now got transparency and I'm just going to drag this down to the one next to the, the bin to copy it and then do control and L and we can tighten up these values to make it pop a little bit more right play with these not too much you don't want it so it's killing it you want to keep those little ranges there like that and I guess that is that. Um, and then you can, if you want to like get rid of this slightly black edge, if you control click the layer, it's going to select all the pixels and then click this mask. All right, and then if you alt click on the mask, you can edit it. Well, you can do that anyway. If you click on the mask, if you alt click it, you'll see it. But if you just click it, you can edit it and see what's happening with it. So I'm going to have it clipped and do filter blur, Gaussian blur, and give it a little bit of uh, edge blur there. I'm just going to do a little bit. Let's just alt click to see what happened there. Okay, so you see it blurred it. Right, and then do control L on that, and you should be able to. Ah, okay, so it's still seeing this layer there. There you go. So with that blur, Working. Let's just do that again. Last filter, and then do Control L, and we can go this way with it. Okay, and then tighten that up a bit. That just gets rid of that black edge and gives you something like that. Okay, you can go ahead and tidy it up even more if you want. If you do have a you know a graphics tablet, then it, it helps. So it's going to choose a paintbrush. I'll pick a color and. Fix up some little tones here. Yeah, 
things will give me some control of the opacity and things. Right, whatever you want to do it there. Okay, uh, you can use some uh, dodge and burn, which is this one, and that will also help highlight some areas. Make sure you combine. I'm just going to merge this down, and you can highlight some some bits like that. Right, it's good enough as it is actually, so I'm just going to um, uh, go to image size and bring it down to like 150 by 150. Let's just make sure that's, yeah. And there you have a little icon and that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.